Lebanon, Saturday at 8.40am. I think this is... Uh... Shall we pick these games, actually? I'm going to go Tonga. Um, I'm going to go Fiji. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for the Kiwis in the first one, and I'm going to go Fiji in the second. Uh, then Samoa versus PNG, Saturday, 10.55am. Um and I'm going to go somewhere in that one. I'm going PNG ins. <laughs> They're not. It's not in PNG. Otherwise, I would have gone for the PNG ins. Is uh, it Origin uh, Campbelltown? It's in it, Leichhardt, isn't it? Fiji and Lebanon. And oh, stuff. Yeah, like Leichhardt. PNG yeah. being played at Leichhardt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Origin two on Sunday, 10:50 a.m. is the listed kickoff time. I'm sure it'll be about 25 Half minutes 11. after that. Um, <laughs> Queensland versus New South Wales, obviously. Uh, big changes in the New South Wales side. We 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 ran through the teams last time. Yeah. Um, not. And we talked about how much inexperience there was. A lot of that's gone, but been replaced by more inexperience. Now I saw a story before we started recording that suggested that Latrell Mitchell and um, who's the halfback who's been. Drop. Cody, Walk- Cody Walker. Cody Walker were dropped because of the whole not singing the anthem thing. Now, that's not why Cody Walker was dropped. He was dropped because he was hugely ineffective, <laughs> pulled off the field because he was doing nothing in Origin in the first game. And Latrell Mitchell was really embarrassed uh, defensively. Yeah, he, he, had, he had a very bad game. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they both had very poor games. Yeah, um, but questionable bringing in Tom Travoy and Jack White into the centres, two players who don't traditionally play centre. Um, I, I, I've got to say, I think the New South Wales team have taken a retrospect. I think they've taken a step backwards. I think there's a little bit of panic in the selections. Um, yeah, because Maloney passed it. Oh, yeah, definitely passed it. Um, uh, Saifi and Fanukan are, are good players. They're making a debut, though, and then they've got Sims yeah. and Murray as well. Wade Graham isn't fit enough to be playing Origin, I don't think, yet. Personally. Like, what, two or three games back, something like yeah. that. Like that. So, yeah. panic, panic stations. I would argue. So, for me, I think Queensland will uh, make it two 0 I I agree. I, I I go Queensland. I I think Queensland comfortable. I think Queensland by three scores. <sighs> Interesting. Yeah, because we'll it was com- completely opposite, wasn't it? Like everyone was uh, assuming that Queensland were the team in transition and chaos, but. But they, um, yeah, they proved that wrong. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And like the the players they've brought in, I know they've brought in, they've had to bring in Wallace and Glasby, but they've both played in Origin series before. Um, I think it's a more settled lineup. It's a more settled squad. There's less conversation around it. There's less yeah. confusion around it. How many changes is it for one, two, three? Four, five, six, seven changes. That's too many. Yeah. Too many changes. With only a week's prep. No, I would agree. Perhaps. Okay. Um, we're both going Queensland in that one then. Yeah. Get your fan views in on all of those games uh, next week, and we will talk about them in next week's show. Simple as uh, that. Right. Let's wrap this one up with a quiz. <laughs> So, Alan, yes. with, it does have a bit of an origin theme. Okay. I've um, got three questions for you. I'm not sure if they get progressively harder, because question two is a multiple choice, but <laughs> we'll see how you get on. We'll see so, how we go. Question one is, who is the only current head coach in Super League to have played State of Origin? Oh, goodness me. <sighs> Let me think, let me think, let me think. Did Adrian Lamb play? No, can't done. Yeah. Oh, was it? Was it Adrian Lamb? Yeah, correct. You're correct. With your I'm Adrian confused Lamb. myself by his PNG um, affiliation. That's what's confusing me. Yeah, no, he did. He played for Queensland. Um, so the next question cool. is how I'm many. Happy, oh, by the way. 
<laughs> How many Origin games did he play? Was it 10, 12, or 14? Right, so from... from I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think back to Tim's quiz last week. And there was a lot. There wasn't many. There wasn't many players who got up to you know into the into the double figures. Um, let's say twelve. It was fourteen. Oh my god! Yeah, that's quite impressive. I don't. Yeah, I don't think of him as a. Anyway, that's very good. Okay. How many Origin series did he win? And you get a bonus point if you can name any of the years that he might have won an Origin series in. Hmm. I'm trying to think of his main years. He 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 definitely featured during when you know when the Blues were a better side. Um, well, he joined Wigan in 2001. Yeah. So obviously that was Origin career done at that stage. Done and dusted at that point. So the, the, there's a nice clue there. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to say he won. Two, and one of those was, let's say, ninety-seven. He did win two. Okay. The second one was by the back door because it was a retained trophy because the series was split one win, one one loss, and one draw. Okay. That was in nineteen ninety-nine. The first time was a clean sweep, nineteen ninety-five, and that was his first Origin series. Okay. Actually, he he was involved in a in a. Queensland clean sweep in 1995. Wow. Two is correct, so you got two out of three correct. Pretty good. I'm happy with that. Happy with that. Okay. Um, any other business? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about and anything you wanted to recommend? Um, just something to, to... It seems like every time I come on here, I'm basically just talking about what Anna's been doing. Um, but yeah. yet again... Um, she's been uh, she's on another podcast I don't know why you're giving her such credit she like she she, she left you all weekend <laughs> I know I know she's abandoned me but yeah no, she's, she's been on another podcast um, so I'm, I'm also recommending another podcast so after you've listened to this um, have a look for um, it, it's called Looks Unfamiliar Looks Unfamiliar and it's a um, I think it's I think it's due out this week, so maybe uh, maybe if you're listening listening to this towards the end of uh, end of the week, it might be out. Um, but yeah, it's all about things that you remember that nobody else does. <laughs> so it's kind of it's uh, you know it's a uh, it's basically the opposite of a Peter K act. It's the stuff that nobody really remembers. What's it? What's it called? Oh, it's called looks unfamiliar. Looks unfamiliar. So yeah, so she, she was the guest with uh, the co- the host, who is called uh, Tim Worthington. So she did that last week. So I was. Um, is that episode available now? Then no, it's going to be later this week. Right. Apparently. So the, the last episode was uh, yeah, she forty two. So it'll be forty three. But apparently it's due out this week or later this week. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that one. But yeah, she's uh, as usual just. Um, just out outshining us as we uh, as, I'm, as as we've come to expect. But yeah, that's my that's my recommendation. <laughs> well, I, I've obviously unsurprisingly got a few from uh, my trip to Italy. Firenze. Yeah. Um, so in Pisa, we'd intended to go to this microbrewery that I'd seen was there, um, but the the Google information was incorrect because when we got right. there, we were only there on the Monday. And the the brew pub was shut on the Monday. See, Mondays Mondays are tough. A lot of things have uh, uh, closed on Mondays. You find, don't you, when you when you're away? Yeah, totally. But having researched it, I was expecting it to be open. You were hoping it would be open here. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but enough. anyway, <laughs> in, instead we stumbled across a, a different place that um, was like a craft beer shop, but uh, craft beer pub, but selling not their own beers in. in instead and um that place was called bear with me because i was finding out what the uh what the beer i drank there was called when i should have been finding out where the place was (laughs) Uh, but it was in pisa and it was by a lovely big square in pisa um and i'm going to butcher the pronunciation massively (laughs) well we wouldn't expect anything else but it was called 
Enoberia Latrusco. Uh, let's say Latrusco is what it's called, <laughs> and it was by the it was by the square that was ne- well a garden more than a square, I suppose. That was that has the statue de Pietro Leopoldo the first um, in Pisa, but it was very good. And the beer, the particular beer that stood out for me that that I had there, although we had um, a few different ones, and Emma left there a lot tipsier than she arrived, <laughs> <laughs> was a beer by a local Tuscan brewery called La Petron oh, this is bad La Petronola La Petronola okay um, the beer was called Metra and it was a, an Indian pale ale that Indian pale ale basically um, okay. it was a very good beer uh, I enjoyed that a lot and then in Florence let me just find this one <laughs> oh, in Florence we did spend a bit of time in the Brewdog pub because um, you know it, it was playing indie music and it was Emma's birthday so she wanted to sit and listen to familiar indie music but we did drink Italian beer whilst we were there we were not just drinking um, the Brewdog beer, but yeah, um, we, we went go. round the corner to have some food. We went to a place called Fermento Food and Beer, uh, and they had their own beer that they brewed, um, which was very very nice. I, I had a couple of pints of that, but also we had food there, and Emma had this um, pasta that was kind of like a ravioli stuff with, stuff with potato, and then it had like a wild boar sauce with some cheese grated on the top. If you are in Florence, I would re- recommend going and having that dish at Fermento Food and Beer. I had a different pasta dish. It was kind of like a beef stew, but with pasta rather than potatoes. It was okay. It, it, Emma's was amazing. Emma's was really nice. And the beer was good too. Um, so <laughs> Fermento Food and Beer in um, in Florence. And then our favourite of the Italian breweries that we um, that we tried... And I've just got to remember the exact name of it, um, but I've had I've had some of their beer over in this country, so you can get it. Oh my god, I can't find it. Uh, no, it's gone. I think it's Venta or something along those lines, but. It really is riveting for everybody. Yeah, I, I'll edit out this silence. I won't actually. I'll leave it in. But anyway, that's what it was. Something like that. Very, it was really nice. I'm just. I'm so annoyed that I can't find it now. Uh, oh. Do you think if, if you I find Google it, Italian you can... brewery? <laughs> There's probably quite a few. You're probably going to be struggling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, lots, lots of nice beers were had. Lots of nice food. It, it, I've got to say, from Instagram, there was lots, lots of lovely pictures. It was, um, it took me right back to being there. So, so that was, it, was, it looked really nice. So, yes, very good. Well, whatever. It was a nice beer. It began with a B. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. The logo is like a V and an A mixed together. Anyway. Anyway. That's a, a low note. Right, what what have we got? Next week's Sarah's coming on next week. She won't delay with any beer um any beer recommendations that she's forgot over over the weekend because I'm sure she'll have something much more educational and important <laughs> to recommend for us. Um in the meantime you can find us at Super League Pod on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod, uh Super League Pod at gmail dot com. I did put some pictures on the Instagram this weekend. Yes you did. Yeah. Superleapod.com is where you can find our blog post, which will have links to all our sponsors. We're going to talk a bit more about those in a second. Search for the show on Spreaker, iTunes, uh, Leecast Android app, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, RugbyLeagueMedia.com and YouTube, um, if wherever you're found to listen to it isn't as good as those options. A Google podcast as well, we're on there. Tell us about our partner sponsors, Alan. 
Yep, so proudly sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop. Um, enter SLP discount on checkout at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay and get 5% cash back on orders of a 5 